Hey everyone, so I'm here to talk a little bit and give a little bit of an update about this Enochian mandala that I've been giving updates on my blog about, but haven't really given a lot of uh, informal expository information uh, outside of that. And I realized that this might be a good time to give a, a less, you know, text wall, you know, talk about it and actually just talk about it, you know, face to face to screen as it were <laughs> or face to screen to screen you know or however many times it takes to upload and then the final screen is the one you're watching on if you're watching at all so how did this mandala come about uh the angels directed me uh because and this has happened multiple times before they're trying to have me look at this and have me look at this and not just to give me a good 360 degree view and make sure that I'm not missing things, although they have definitely done that uh, as I've gone along and I've tried to pay attention and learn from them, etc. Uh, but also um, to show areas where more um, more guidance or more more excuse me more um, guidance as far as additional expansions of the system are available. So if what we got uh, from John D. and Edward Kelly was the um, initial deal, the initial, um, you know, game, the standalone game where we, and by the way, we had to kind of piece it together because it really, you know, some of the code was garbled. And so what we have now is a little bit of a, um, a, a spliced together working system. Uh, that is as close as we can get to what Dee and Kelly were working with, as far as we know. And then we have to, like, fill in the gaps as best we can. It's kind of like, if, you, if for any coders out there, it's like, you know, you grab somebody else's code and you're trying to figure out what they're doing and you put in your own little patches and stuff like that. So basically, you can think of, like, the initial thing that we got is, like, that video game after we've put in some patches. It may not be exactly the way that it was originally intended, but we've done what we can to make it workable. And then as we go along, the angels try to give us more information, but we're all our own nervous systems, right? So we're gonna miss some things. Or we're all gonna, and we're gonna miss some things and you know, the, the angels will do our best to try to help us out, but also they're gonna give us information that is unique to each of us. And so I'm definitely, you know, getting stuff that's unique to me. Uh, but nonetheless, I still try, I'm trying to get information that seems like it could be useful to everybody, right? Not just me. So, because otherwise, what's the point? You know, however many days I got left on this earth, uh, you know, it's not just to, uh, to be spent sending out YouTube videos or emails or this or that. It's trying to give something that could be useful to uh, everybody else and, you know, and their hearts and all of that, uh, especially in this time we're living in where there's a lot of problems. <laughs> so, hey, there's problems. So anyway, I'm going on. So what do we do about the problems? Well, in my case, I know my calling is to help people develop, right? And one of the ways that I've been lucky to be able to help people develop is I've been given, you know, certain calling, certain gifts, whatever, uh, particular when it, particularly when it comes to Enochian, okay? And the specific thing that I'm both A, interested in and B, getting the downloads about is helping to, uh, you know, if the, if the Enochian system right now can be thought of as a game that we've managed to patch together from that initial D and Kelly download, then after then this would be the downloadable content right literally like i'm getting i'm getting downloads you know like you hear new agers say it used to be you just got messages but ever since computers everybody's like oh i'm getting downloads it's like okay or the internet i should say so so what kind of downloads did i get what is this mandala about bringing it back to the beginning so the angels had me look at the uh watchtower tablets and I've probably, I've given an introduction to that before. So see my previous video on Enochian tools and stuff like that. But one of the things uh, they had me review was the watchtowers. I'm like, okay, I'll take a look. And uh, so I took a look and I noticed that there were capital letters. And 
this is not something new, but it's sort of, I probably noticed it initially and just forget, you forget about stuff because, you know, we're all only human. Um, but I noticed that there were capital letters and some of these are familiar if you've like gone through the aethers. So for example, one part of the earth that is associated uh, with one of the aethers is known as para oan, and that is made up entirely of not just uh, capital letters, but uh, reversed capital letters. So a capital letter P, except it's going the other way, <laughs> right? Or maybe I should do it like this since you're seeing me and then, you know, going the other way would be like that. Um, so switched. Uh, and, you know, the, the original source documents, they're, you know, they're, they're done in English letters slash, you know, Roman letters, however you want to put it. But, you know, English because we have lowercase. So they have lowercase and uppercase letters, and that was the way it was received. But I no noticed that there were uh, 100 of these. Um, if you do the math on the, uh, with the exception of the, um, the black cross, which is made up of 20 letters. Uh, the rest of the four watchtower tablets, you know, one for fire, one for earth, one for air, one for water, um, is the, each of those is made up of 156 letters. And so you do the math on that, four times 156 is 624, plus the 20 from the great cross is 644 in all. Okay, so, but there are of those letters, 100 are capital letters. So the thing about that is, is that, you know, so the watchtower tablets are all 12 by 13, you know, unless you sort of, and then with that 13th row is actually, you know, the middle row actually, but the one that if you exclude this one, that's 12 by 12, but God is the names of God you know, three names of God, one, three letters, one, four, one, five, those uh, are on each of the four watchtower tablets, and each of those gets its own row. Each, each 12, let, three name combo uh, gets its own row. So I'm mentioning all of this to say that, you know, the Enochian, the way it was originally transmitted, it was almost all of it was transmitted in these perfect squares. So if you look at the uh, uh, heptarchy, the angelic heptarchy, there were um, seven seven by seven squares or tables or whatever you want to, put, however you want to put it. Um, and from those 343 angel names uh, can be derived to make the entire uh, you know, heptarchy with all the governors and uh, stuff like that. I believe that the, I believe that the, there's like governors and then there are ministers. I'm not sure about whether or not all of the, whether or not all of the ministers are in there, but I'm pretty sure all the governors are in there. So anyway, that's a whole other topic. But the point is that transmission, it was made via seven, seven by seven cubes or squares, I should say. And so if you take the whole thing, you get seven cubed, 343. So, and the same thing happened, you know, with the uh, names of the archangels that were transmitted. There were actually 48 letters. And then the last thing that was delivered was a cross for Christ. But you take all those angel names as they were delivered and you get 48 letters for the seven archangels. And then one of them, I think it's Gabriel, I want to say, no, it's what, anyway, they, they added a cross because you get 48 the way it was transmitted. Um, and the same thing is with the Enochian alphabet. That actually came uh, through as a, an eight by eight cross. And it was done by spelling all, spelling out the names of all the letters. So the letter B, the name for that in Enochian is Pa, and then the letters P-A for that, you know, because... Like if we were to spell out the letter C, it would be C-E-E -E in English. So if you spell all those out, you get 64 letters of the names of the letters. You know, it's kind of, you know, pause, P-A, G is, uh, their letter G is Jed, so G-E-D, so on and so forth. And so anyway, you, you see this over and over. I could go on and on, and I already have. 
but the 10 by 10, just so you know, those 100 letters that fits into that perfect square um, theme. And, you know, if you're just taking a little step back before I get into the mandala one more time, be patient, I will get there. Um, you see this concept in alchemy where the circle is God and the trine is the triangle is basically that intermediary between us and God, and then the square is like creation, right? So the fact that the, the square, the squares that we're getting, the implication is, is that these are perfect squares, you know, literally perfect squares that will allow us to get closer to that intermediary relationship with God, the triangle, and then ultimately the sphere. And this, this holds, if you think about it, in the sense that each of the, there are 30 aethers. So basically there are 10 triangles that you go through, you know, that sort of thing. Um, okay, so 100 letters. So I just, you know, noted them and I felt compelled to, um, to arrange them in a certain manner. And so it was like this, right? So far so good. But then I was like, hmm, I'm sort of getting an intuition that I ought to combine those letters along with certain names of God, such as Pele, the one that's on the Enochian ring, um, to combine those with the initial uh, seven by seven uh, table from which the children of light uh, were derived, the sons of light, the daughters of light, etc. Sons of sons and sons and daughters and daughters of light. And also, you know, um, also the names of the archangels. And I think I have a note in the spreadsheet about, uh, you know, that same seven by seven tables. I have a note in that, in the document that includes all of these. And I think there was like a little additional stuff because basically you see here, you know, if I were to take a hundred letters, those of you who are paying close attention, that would be four or five by five, but I actually have slightly more than that if you have if you add in the elements that make it like a cross. So I think it's 32 letters in each one of those like little squares with the corners cut out and so on. But this includes all of these, uh, a lot of the original transmission stuff with just just small elaborations, including the name of Pele, and all of that. So, okay, then we get into the download. <laughs> so it's like, it's like almost like, um, you know, here's the initial thing and here's the other thing. So one other thing I wanted to mention, actually, that, that actually comes next. Okay, so, so then we get into the download. And what do I get? Well, I get not only the actual download per se of letters, but it also I get numbers. And some of these, you know, for example, um, 64 and 25 and 81, you get into the cubes and the, you know, 64, it's the sixth power of two and so on and so forth. But this is what it looks like. And along the way, I'm getting like some prime numbers, relatively large prime numbers, I'll add. Uh, but some of them, not necessarily prime, but just numbers that I'm supposed to put in. Um... Okay, so that's great. <laughs> so this is the end of it, right? Well, not quite. Well, let me, let me, I'll, I'll breeze through the last few and then I will um, give it, wrap up, kind of wrap up the talk uh, with uh, how to and what you're supposed to do with all this stuff. So give me one second. Clearly, I did not completely prepare. Um, so I wanted to talk about the way it's coming through. So if you look here, right, so I've actually folded this, uh, the paper I was just showing you, I folded it over, I'll do a little bit better job, job of it here, uh, to show you that what's coming through is not just a bunch of tables. They're actually um, grids that are supposed to go along dimensional axes, okay? So if you go back to, you know, algebra class where you, they would have you graph stuff, right? And there were certain letters, there are certain letters that I am getting along an x-axis, which I'm showing in dark gray, or lighter gray as you get towards the edges, 
And I apologize, this isn't quite to scale, so these don't exactly line up just because one of them is stretched out more, but that's okay. It'll You'll get the idea here. So you see here these letters in the middle, the vertical line here, the vertical, you know, gr uh, graph axis, the Y axis, is base is the same letters, right? If you get, if you take a close look, especially you can see at the middle, the the L is the same, and then you know if I just shift it a little bit, you can see it more closely here. So, at any rate, this same central axis is showing that you you know you start off with an x y x axis, and then I we because we can do this in three dimensions. I'm showing you this to show that, okay, really what this is supposed to do is sort of come out at like an angle, right? A 90 degree angle. And if I show it like this, you know, this thing that's closest to you is, you know, like an X, we get into like, not just an X, Y axis, but also a Z axis where like, which one is closer to you or not, which one is farther away. So that's like the third dimension, you know, you see this in, you know, movies where they're trying to get show a little bit more and Star Wars didn't do that it was always like straight lines <laughs> in the original um so anyway all of these are coming along with the shared central axis the the technical term is that they are perpendicular to each other or if you want to get really fancy you say they are orthogonal to each other <laughs> um exactly perpendicular basically right so okay so where's this going? Well, obviously we live in a 3D world, or do we? <laughs> um, so I kept on getting downloads. I kept on getting downloads, downloads, downloads. And it did not just stop with, you know, here's the original capital letters in the, in the Watchtower's tablets. Here's the, you know, download here's a little bit of a remix using what we've already shown you now we're into full download territory right uh not just that obviously but some of these things sometimes they're i'm getting phrases other times i'm just getting numbers okay so and they are sometimes there are some patterns to them but i don't entirely i'm not going to claim to entirely understand what's going on with this. Um, that being said, I, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm bragging too much if I say like, this is, this definitely feels like higher quality outside of my normal consciousness kind of information, if that makes sense. Like basically I'm not just picking stuff out of the air. Or, I'm, or put it better way, I'm picking very select things out of the air and arranging them in a particular manner as I'm being shown, right? As I'm being guided. So those were the first two, or possibly three, if you can count that gray table. But I, I, you, know, you can make an argument. You get the first two tables and then you get three dimensions that way, right? So this next part, it won't take very long at all. So... I continue to get tables and I have four more tables, right? So we go from, you know, three dimensions out to seven. I was specifically shown that this table and then this table and this table and finally this one, these four, which are all present on my website right now, they should all be used as a group. So that kind of makes sense, right? Use these to just get yourself into seven dimensional plus consciousness, right? Really, what I was told is that um, you can use this to get into eight dimensional consciousness because there's almost like a little, it's almost like you get done with one course of a meal. If you want to get really fancy rich talking, let me, let me put it to this, let me put it differently. Um, if you finish one grade in level in school, if you really think about it, or if you're doing like kind of stuff over the summer, you can start extending into these higher grade level concepts. So if you're in school and you do summer reading, suddenly you might be considering things that they actually don't cover until the next year in school. So you, you start getting that shades of the next dimension up. Okay. 
So all of that being said, um, how? <laughs> how do you use this? Well, the those of you of a certain age uh, may remember um, magic eye squares. So those are things where the the image is set up in such a way that if you trick yourself, if you're looking straight at this thing, but you tell your eyes, no, act like you're looking a mile away, right? Then you can see an image that you cannot see if you're just looking at the, the screen that it's actually in front of, that's actually in front of you, right? Or the, the picture. Look up magic eyes. I'm not going to do that for you. I always give homework, right? <laughs> so like I said, you can there, therefore extend yourself out. Um, so the idea here is that, uh, and by the way, you might have noticed that some of these are not complete perfect squares. I'm being, I'm being told that that's, that's, that's sort of like a built-in wobble. Like you're given different sections of that, of those axes so that um, it can land a little bit different for each of you. It's basically like it's going to land and wobble you into a, maybe not a perfectly aligned, you know, dimension, aw dimensional awareness relative to me or your, your friend or whoever else. Um, but the whole idea here is that you gaze at it, right? You are looking at it. You're not, you, if you meditate in advance, that's great. But look at it. Thoughts may come up. Consciousness may, you know, you may see things kind of like coming out of it. One story from like Libra Loga, and I've done a couple of videos on that and a couple of podcasts is that Edward Kelly actually started reading something loud and like a spirit, like kind of a gnome-like spirit came out of the sheet and started, you know, harassing him. And he got this poltergeist phenomenon where poor Edward Kelly's getting, you know, beaten up by this gnome. And then John Dee has to banish it using his magic wand. Um, the whole idea is that you don't need to worry about that, <laughs> but you're going to find your consciousness evolving. Um, that's kind of what you get when you go through the aethers. And now exact, specifically, they're telling me that this is an extension of the same kind of consciousness that you're getting. It's, you know, if you do the, did the aethers perfectly, they're telling me you're going to get that, get something of the effect that you would get from these tables, right? So my suggestion is to print them out because you get certain eye strain when you look uh, at the computer. If you need them larger, that's fine. You know, can just, you know, cut them up with a pair of scissors and then tape it together. That's fine. These are all kind of small. I do, you know, set print area, print, uh, and then uh, do some scaling so that it fits in a certain page just so I could show all of this to you. But that's about it. Um, you gaze at the each of the tables, do them in order. So do the first two and then there are four additional ones that you can do sequentially in the same sitting more or less. And just try to relax. Try to have, if you want, like, if you're one of the people who gets really distracted, have some kind of music that can kind of help. But the idea is, you, and you can even pre-record, I'm going to look at this page, this page, and this, this page, and this page, and see what comes out, and work with it. If it's, if it's a being, work with it, try to be open-hearted, listen to what it has to say, that sort of thing. And, and the, the angels are really trying to emphasize this is both exactly what you do. You would get if you did the aether, if you scribed the aethers perfectly, but also in a lot of ways, this is an extension and I'm, I have to close my eyes now because they really want to say there are, they're saying there are countless dimensional tables countless dimension across which these tables can be uh, seen and that these particular 
tables are all about and close to the heart of the divine. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm getting there. Um, and they're sort of specifically having me say the letter L that's at the very middle, it's not only like the Hebrew name God L, which is the, and this is the Enochian equivalent, it's just the letter. Uh, but also if you, if you pay attention to that, it's, there's this opening and it's like um, how in Buddhism they talk about emphasizing the concept of em emptiness. Things are empty of inherent um, existence. Uh, they just happen to be configured in a certain way. Um, but of course, it's not just that. There is some structures about that. So at any rate, the, the very center is like the divine heart. Okay, the heart of the divine. Um, okay, so yeah. So I'm getting a good sense that this is going to be helpful to folks and that, you know, whether it's a year from now, 10 years from now, whatever, that people are going to find this to be helpful to them. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, you can reach out through my website, enochian.today. I do apologize for the length, but I'm trying to, trying to help people along here as best I'm being shown. And uh, yeah, I'm going to continue to work on this. This is going to go up to not only eight dimensions, but I'm being told it will ultimately have, it will ultimately get people up to 12D consciousness, at least here upon little old earth. And uh, maybe if some people suspect we're going to get a big shift. And this is, I'm not the, I'm not saying this as my own thing. I'm saying people in the know, people who have, who are better at the prophecy thing than I am. Uh, they seem to believe that we're going to have a massive shift in about 2026. And this is playing a part in it. Um, I think we're all playing a part in it. So I think anytime we try to be good to each other, try to solve problems, try to, try to develop, um, we're part of that shift and that growing up phase. We're trying to get past our adolescence right now and into adulthood. And I think that's wonderful for us. And I want to let you know that, um, you know, all of this stuff, you know, you know, I love you all. And I want stuff like this to help you out in whatever way it does. You know, I don't expect anybody doing this to become, you know, anything other than what they could become already. So um, anyway, I think that's it. Uh, love you all. I will see if you have any questions, like I said, reach out through my website, enochian.today. Uh, I will not ask you to like subscribe or anything like that. Um, but I do want to make, my, uh, make myself available to answer questions because I know enochian is big, blah, blah, blah. But what this is, even though I gave you the long lead up, if you just skip to the timestamp where I finally talk about how to use it, um, it's actually really simple print stuff out, stare at it, gaze at it, you know, use it as a meditative focus and watch your consciousness change. Okay. So I've told you, you know, your consciousness will change. It will develop. It's not always easy. So there's always that, um, that caution in advance, but uh, nonetheless, I think it's it's like that old phrase: uh, no, no, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, and you know, we all have growing pains to go through. That's just life. Uh, but this would be one of those where it's possible you'll have minor ones when it comes to your consciousness. And then just do the normal things: stay grounded, talk with re you know well reasonable your more most reasonable friends to keep you grounded, friends and family that you trust. And for the most part, just chill out and allow yourself to muddle through whatever growing pains come up and then they will go away because they do. Or you will, you will realize that the problems are kind of more higher level and not kind of, you know, low level problems, you know. And if you think about that, you kind of know what I mean. The petty problems of the world. Anyway, I am going to keep this under half an hour. So love you all. Any questions, reach out. Bye.